All right, well, it's, uh, it's Easter Day this morning, and uh, usually people take Easter Day to uh, remember the, uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, I prefer Easter to Christmas just because, you know, remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is actually something that we are, uh, you know, asked to do in the Bible, whereas remembering <coughs> the birth of Jesus Christ um, is not something that the Lord has ordained. Not that I'm against Christmas or any of those things, but that's why I think uh, as Christians and as as believers in Jesus Christ, we ought to put really more emphasis on Easter. And I thank God that in our country we have, you know, a public holiday and a long weekend uh, where we can, uh, you know, remind the world also of uh, the death and burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, um, you know, before I get into what I want to preach about this morning, I just want to touch on a couple of things with Easter. You know, Easter is a time where we remember the death and the resurrection. Um, but one thing I want to say about Easter is it's not, it's not a pagan tradition. A lot of people... Uh, you know, sort of buy into this, uh, this theory or this story that the word Easter is pagan. Um, that's not what I believe about Easter. Uh, what I believe about Easter, Easter is just another word for the word Passover. And my understanding is, is um, I believe it was actually Tyndale, or one of the translators of the English Bible actually created the word Passover, but before it was known as Passover, it was known as Easter, and that's why in the translations of the English Bible prior to the King James Bible, they used that word Easter more, and then they left it in Acts 12, uh, probably just so that we had the vocabulary there, so we could see where it came from, and now it's referred to as the Passover. But I just want to show you that from the Bible, um, that indeed, even from the Bible, you can prove that Easter is in fact the Passover. Um, but look in Acts 12, it says there, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So what, what is the period of time here when Herod is stretching forth his hand to vex the church and kill James? It's the days of unleavened bread, or what we know as in the Bible as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was a Passover on the 14th day of the month of Abib. And there was seven days, uh, which was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So this is when this is happening. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So... You see there, he's waiting for this period of unleavened bread to you know, take Peter and, and, and do more persecution to the church. And he's doing that because he saw it please the Jews and because he didn't want to upset the Jews. He didn't want to do that during the days of unleavened bread. And we can see there that it was the days of unleavened bread. And this is what the Bible calls that period of the days of unleavened bread, intending after Easter Easter being that, that Passover period, the days of unleavened bread. And you might be thinking, well, isn't Passover just that first day and then it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Well, look here in uh, Luke 22. Because yes, that first day is referred to in the Bible as the Passover, but the period, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, is also referred to in the Bible as the Passover. And I can prove that to you from uh, Luke 22, chapter 1. It says here, now the Feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. So not only is the Passover the day where they, you know, they killed the Passover lamb and you know, put the blood on the doorpost, it's, the Passover is also that whole period of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that's just what the word Easter is. The East, Easter is just another word for Passover because Passover was a created English word to call that feast and that's what we refer to it now uh, in English. So it's not a pagan tradition. It's, it didn't come from, I don't believe it came from pagan origins. Now, do a lot of people celebrate Easter with pagan traditions? Yes, they do. And that is what I would definitely discourage you as believers in Jesus Christ, that we do not continue with the vain traditions. We don't continue with the chocolate eggs and the chocolate bunnies and the Easter egg hunt because they probably do come from pagan traditions. And, you know, me personally, I don't, I don't um, uh, continue those traditions in my family. Because, you know, when I got saved and I started getting into the Word of God, and, and when I was thinking about, you know, getting married and starting a family, I decided in my own heart 
you know, I am not going to continue with vain traditions, vain traditions of culture, vain traditions of tradi traditions, anything. Um, I thought, you know, with, with my own life and with my own family, I'm just going to go back to the Bible. And unless I have a Bible principle of why I'm going to continue on a tradition, I'm just going to stop it. I'm going to stop it at my family. And, you know, the reason why these traditions continue is because we keep doing it. You know, if, if God's people would stop celebrating Christmas and celebrating Easter with pagan and vain traditions, then it would stop, wouldn't it? Because, you know, they wouldn't sell the Easter eggs. They wouldn't sell, you know, the Christmas trees and the tinsel and all that stuff. Now, am I saying that it's wrong? No. You know, if you want to celebrate those traditions, that's fine. I just don't think, um, you know, it's, we have a biblical uh, scriptural principle in order to continue them. And that's why I think they, they are vain. They're, they're pointless to do. You know, what about hot cross buns? You know, hot cross buns, you know, I'm a little partial towards hot cross buns because, you know, the, the, the bread being, um, you know, representing the body of Jesus, the cross. So, you know, at least you have a, a scriptural principle of why you want to bake hot cross buns. But, you know, why doesn't our family, why don't we have hot cross buns today? Because personally, I just, I just loathe fruit bread. So that's, that's, that's my own reason. The only, the only reason why I ever eat fruit bread is if it's toasted and it has a lot of butter. But, you know, that's, that's why. So I'm not against um, hot cross buns, but I'm probably a bit partial to them. Um, and not, don't, don't come down on them so hard. So that's what I want to say about Easter. You know, it's not a pagan tradition. I have nothing against Easter. I have nothing against, you know, having traditions. If you have a reason for why you celebrate a tradition in your family, you know, go ahead. That's your own family. Um, I don't in my family. 